Hey guys, it's uh, Henry from Adventure Air here, and uh, we're here in the maintenance shop today, uh, here with uh, Walter Rosales. Come on in, Walter. Walter's our head me mechanic here, and he's doing a lot of work, and he, we've just got finished putting together this uh, Cavalon Auto Gyro here, and experimental, of course. And uh, so we're almost at the stage where we're gonna go out and flight test it. So um, it is looking pretty good here. Um, so it's a 2023 model. It's got all the latest uh, um, attachments. It's got the brand new, newest rotor head, uh, the rotor head 3D up top. It's a, it's a pretty sweet machine. We still have a couple little things to do on it. We're gonna put the wheel pants on. Uh, there's a fin that is a rock protector for the propeller that we're gonna put on there as well. But uh, it's good enough. Well, we've been uh, running the engine. The engine sounds strong. And uh, we're gonna do quite a few tests. Again, when we go to, uh, to fly the thing, uh, we'll do several ground runs first, just run up and down the runway several times. We'll spin the rotor up uh, on the ground, do a couple of uh, ground runs with the rotor running. Then I'll run, make a couple of runs down the runway, just doing a wheel balance, just getting that nose off the ground, but not leaving the ground. We'll run that several times. If everything is looking good, the machine's feeling good, then I'll do another pass where I'll actually run down the runway and we'll just get it off the ground, just maybe one or two feet off the ground. I'll fly the runway. I'll do that several times as well. And then uh, we'll just do a slow progression uh, of tests with the machine until we feel it's ready to go around the pattern. If it all looks good, we'll take off, fly around the pattern, come back in and land. We'll do several of those. So it's a, a cumulative process of getting uh, everything ready for the uh, for testing the machine. And uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. So anyway, the reason we're not flying today, uh, the winds are pretty gnarly today. They are, we've had just had a gust to 60 miles an hour. Normally you can fly the gyros in pretty high wind, but I want that to be a consistent wind. I want it to be 30 or 40 or even 50 miles an hour consistent is good, but we're gusting now. It's 20 miles an hour gusting to 40, gusting to 50, gusting to 60. So eh, it's a little, little, uh, little risky on flying today. So that's why we're in the shop here doing some work. And what work are we doing? We're gonna work on uh, this guy right here. So, Believe it or not, one day I was goofing off uh, looking on the internet and I went onto Craigslist. And you know how you shop on Craigslist and you're looking for stuff? Well, an ad popped up and said Cavalon for sale. And I'm like, what? A Cavalon on Craigslist? Uh, so I looked it up and uh, luckily the guy was here in Southern California. So I drove over to his hangar and he had purchased it uh, in, at an auction for something. And it was basically just a Cavalon body. Um, had a little bit of damage to it. Uh, there was some holes punched in and all. I don't know if it was from transport or whatever. So we had to do a bit of body work on it. So a little body work here and there, but uh, we're gonna turn this into a fun project. We're gonna put this thing back together and make it fly again. Uh, we gutted the whole thing, took all the insides out, um, and then we're just going through all the systems and the controls and all that. But I've slowly been buying parts for it. So I do call this this Frankenstein because I've, uh, I've got a, a cowling here and a, and a tail from there and a prop from here. So we're, we're piecing the thing together and then we're going to uh, take it out for a flight once it's all done. So you'll see I have ordered a lot of parts from Autogyro. When it is finished, it's gonna have all the latest stuff. It's gonna have the, the brand new rotor head, uh, the 3D rotor head on it. We're gonna have the new pneumatic system on it. It's gonna be sweet once we're all finished. The question I have for you guys is, we didn't really care for this color. It's kind of this olive, olive color, which uh, I wasn't really excited about. So I'm gonna paint the thing. And I want your opinion. What color do you think we should paint this? Uh, we can pretty much do anything we want. I do have a suggestion I was kind of leaning towards, but I wanna know what you think the pros and cons would be if I painted the thing a matte black. So I got a can of uh, Raptor truck bed liner paint, uh, which, is a, which is a matte black. And I sprayed this, this, this wheel uh, fairing here just to kind of see. I kind of like it. And this, um, this truck bed liner stuff is like, it's, it's strong. I mean, you will not get a scratch on it. It does have a little bit of a texture to it, but I think I like that. And so this was just a kind of a test to see if we're gonna like that color. But what do you guys think? You think the whole thing black would be cool or not? Why don't you write, uh, give us a comment there and tell us what you think. We are taking everyone's opinion on what you think we should do with this thing. So this whole project, I'm going to guess, will take us, uh, if we work consistent on it, it would probably take us about three or four weeks to put this thing together. So we're gonna see how it goes. So tell me what you think. 
Okay, so um, I didn't pay too much for the body here. It was a pretty good deal, actually. Again, I didn't like that olive color, so we have started sanding it down a bit. And again, someone punched a little hole in it right here, so we bonded that back up and got that, got that fixed out. There was a little damage on the firewall back here, so um, we had a professional reinforce the firewall with this with carbon fiber and fiberglass. And the next step is uh, the engine mount. So <clears throat> I bought a brand new engine mount from Autogyro uh, that does go in the, uh, in the Cavalon here. And once we have it, it'll mount something like this. Doo -doo which will be pretty sweet. Oil tank goes right here. Of course, engine right there. Engine wise, um, this mount is for a Rotex engine. And so we're deciding what uh, size we want. If we want to go with a, um, a 912 engine, a ULS, which is 100 horsepower. But there are several people that make these upgrade kits uh, with an intercooler, turbo, different cylinders. There's a guy in Europe that's uh, using the 912 and he's boosting the horsepower up to 200 horsepower. That's gonna be a little extreme, I think, for what we wanna do. We may wanna bump it up to maybe 150 or so, 140 to 150. That would make it the equivalent of a, a 915 engine from Rotex. But we're still thinking about it. We're trying, well, you tell me, what kind of engine you should we put on this guy here? Um, I kinda like the 912 engine because I have a spare one sitting around and um, we can do that modifications with the intercooler, the turbo and the cylinders and uh, kind of see what horsepower we get. But let me know what you think. Hey, so uh, avionics wise, I've kind of undecided what to do. So we got a big old blank panel here that we uh, are gonna fill in. And uh, what should I put in here? I was thinking about going with the Garmin, the Garmin G3X, uh, like that normally goes into um, the Cavalons. Uh, I was gonna go with a single big 10 inch screen uh, with the Garmin, but I haven't decided. And maybe I'll have some backup steam gauges as well. Uh, what do you guys think on my uh, avionics? What should I put in this thing, huh? All right, so we're uh, down here by the good old wheel of the Cavalon, and uh, we're talking about the braking systems here. So the brake pads are down in here, and then you got your rotor here, which of course the brake pad squeezes on the rotor to slow it down. Um, these are dual disc brakes, uh, brakes on both the back tires of the Cavalon. And um, the trick on pretty much all braking systems, especially here too, is, um, uh, inside, we'll go inside in a moment, I'll show you the braking system, but when you're braking it, you just want to, uh, you want to pulse the brakes, kind of squeeze the brakes and let it off, squeeze the brakes, let it off. You don't want to ride the brake as you're driving, you know, on the taxiway to the runway all the time. If you do that, these rotors are going to heat up, you know, and your braking pads are going to heat up, and then there, uh, you're not going to be able to have a good stopping power when you get to the run-up area or to your runway to hold short. So don't ride the brakes you know, on the Cavalon for a long time. Just give it a pulse. What I do is if I get going too fast, especially if you have a runway or a taxiway that's a little downhill to the runway, I just pulse it and let it go, pulse it, let it go. If you let it go, you're waiting for that, uh, that the temperature to come down. You know, The longer that you're off the brakes, the more the temperature comes down and then you have good braking power. If you ever get to the run-up area or to the hold short line and you don't have any brakes left, you know, then you want to reach up, bam, turn your magnetos off, shut the engine down, that'll stop your forward motion. But that's if you run out of uh, brakes. All right. Okay, guys, so this is the, um, the throttle and the brake system on the Cavalon. And of course, there's your throttle motion. The brakes are right here. So you don't have toe brakes on, a, on, a, uh, on the Cavalon gyro like you would on an airplane. Uh, the braking system is right here. So to brake this, you just squeeze that. that that's your brakes right there. So you can throttle and brake. And you don't wanna ride the brakes like or keep the brakes on the whole time as you're taxiing. You would be a pulsing motion. You would brake and then get off of it. Brake, get off of it. Also, there's a parking brake. So you can squeeze this and set that little tab. That sets your parking brake. To release the parking brake, you don't wanna pull on that. You wanna pull, pull that neural knob and that takes your brake right off, okay? By the way, <laughs> if you live in the Southern California area and you wanna help out uh, with us putting Frankenstein together here, uh, you're welcome. Come on down to the Chino Airport and uh, give us a hand. We'd be happy to uh, have your help. Again, our telephone number is uh, 310-570-9390. Give us a call, we'll tell you if we're working on it and uh, come on down and give us a hand.